The EV startup boom is over, and there's a mad scramble to avoid a bust. According to Automotive News, EV startups are mostly over budget and behind schedule. Who will win? It's hard to say, but a lot of politicians were around not long ago trying to save the day. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here today with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. What's going on in the EV market, Liz? Lots of dreary news for folks. Seems like it's spread out a bit because it's not just the startups, by the way. There's also troubling news for Ford. 29 of their dealers have dropped out of their EV program and there seems to be growing discontent. Dealers in North Carolina are the latest group to file a legal challenge against Ford over the EV program following similar actions in New York and Illinois. This growing group of Ford Motor Company dealers have dropped out of the automaker's EV certification program after the automaker made changes following complaints raised by a majority of state dealer associations. Ford said that as of the end of February, 1,891 retailers are now enrolled in the Model E program, down 1.5% from the 1,920 that originally signed up. Trying to make the best of bad news, a Ford spokesperson said the company was still pleased with the figures. A Ford spokesperson said it is important that dealers have the option to do what they believe is best for their businesses and their customers for the 2024-2026 period. As we continue to scale our EV volumes, our second enrollment period will open up for 2027 and 2029. Among the changes, Ford said dealers no longer had to operate public electric vehicle chargers around the clock, and those in the certified tier would not be capped at selling 25 EVs per year. 25 EVs per year, yeah. that's nothing. No. In the world of EV startups, the news isn't very rosy. By last year, the world was supposed to have three-wheeled electric cars powered by roof-mounted solar panels, <laughs> believe it or not. Cities were to see electric buses flooded with natural light and padded by soothing grays like a luxury Manhattan apartment. Wow. Commercial deliveries would zip across the nation in matte electric vans, sharing more stuff for less money, or so the EV enthusiasts would have us believe. EV startups, the subject of seemingly limitless industry buzz, raised millions of dollars from investors and would-be customers who were told that an electric future was just around the corner. But that corner has proven to be much further off than many of its proponents wanted to admit. Instead, many of the stewards of the EV future are struggling to pay their bills. Yeah. They are contending with higher costs, government probes, lawsuits, turnover, and investor burnout in a high interest rate environment. For many, the EV startup boom is turning into a bummer of sorts. <laughs> Jeff Osborne, a senior analyst at TD Cohen said, there's definitely a sense of fatigue. These stocks, putting it bluntly, are dramatically out of favor. It's very unclear who's going to win. Equally troubling is that EV startups are just burning through their cash right now. Of the 10 EV startups reviewed by Automotive News, only four have enough cash on hand to cover a year or more of operating expenses, and only a couple can cover more than two years of their cash burn, according to the most recent available Securities and Exchange Commission filings. Several, including Nicola Corp, Faraday Future Intelligent Electric Inc., and Arrival, have identified doubt about their abilities to continue as a going concern, are facing lawsuits by investors or government probes from agencies such as the SEC, or are dealing simultaneously with more than one of these issues. Some have been the subject of embarrassing short seller reports by investment research firms. And for the most part, the products they promise to investors and the public remain quite a bit out of reach. To be sure, companies in every industry raise money on promises they're not sure they can keep. Yeah. It's exceedingly rare for startups of any kind, let alone automakers, to succeed. Hmm. But the EV startup market has been a particular slide away from the days of optimism and big brags of 2020. Regarding the EV boom in 2020, companies and investors saw an opportunity. Then-presidential candidate Joe Biden pitched incentives for drivers to swap older cars for electric vehicles made in America. After he got into office, Biden pledged to build 550,000 EV charging stations. Call that a big swing and a miss, as there are currently 30 different EV charging network companies across the U.S. who control roughly 47,000 stations. I wonder how it feels for Joe to miss his goal by 503,000 stations. Wow. At the same time as Joe was making these promises, California Governor Gavin Newsom issued an executive order requiring that all passenger vehicles sold in the state be zero emission by 2035. Firms such as FedEx and Amazon made investments and brokered deals to move towards electrification of their delivery fleets. All eyes were on Tesla Inc.'s success. The company's stock gained more than 650% in 2020, giving yeah. it a market value of 
658 billion at the end of that year, which it's still just under 600 billion. Yeah. More than that of Ford Motor Company, General Motors, and what was then Fiat Chrysler automobiles combined. Low interest rates made it relatively easy to raise capital for these startups chasing the Tesla dream. At least 20 EV-related companies went public through special purpose acquisition company deals that year, including Nikola, Canoe Inc., and Lordstown Motors Corp., and even EV companies that did not, such as Workhorse Group Inc., saw increased publicity and investor interest. Hello, I'm Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications about coming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on the ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Some investors and consumers might have been eager to believe ambitious claims by companies because of their stated values. Among them, saving the planet. <laughs> and some of the EV companies overpromised, even to the point of allegations of criminality. And here are some of the bad apples. In September 2020, Hindenburg Research released its report on Nikola, saying it was an intricate fraud. The company acknowledged a truck appearing to cruise down a desert road under its own power in a video was not. The SEC launched an inquiry. Ultimately, Trevor Milton, Nikola's founder, was convicted of fraud. Nikola settled with the SEC for $125 million. Wow, that's a ton of bucks. Yep. In 2021, J Capital Research published a report calling Faraday Future Nothing but a bucket to collect money from U.S. investors and pour it into the black hole of debt created by its founder. Wow. A company spokesperson said, the substantive allegations of inaccurate disclosures in the report were not supported by the evidence reviewed. The SEC launched an investigation and the company underwent a transformative restructuring. Now both of those companies are facing other pressures. Nicola and Faraday Future in their 2022 annual filings both disclosed substantial doubt about their abilities to continue. Nicola had about seven months worth of cash to cover operating expenses as of its latest SEC filing. Faraday Future had less than a month's worth of cash to cover operating expenses. Those stumbles and others began to erode investor confidence in electric vehicles from other companies too. Robert Bollinger, CEO of Bollinger Motors said, you had companies have outright fraud investigations early on, and that didn't help becoming fodder for why investors might be shy to invest. Well, reality is setting in. Osborne of TD Cohen also described one-off cases where people were trying to do something that was super exotic and had difficulty. Arrival, for example, expected to begin production in 2022 of an electric bus that would be lighter than other battery electric buses made with lightweight recyclable composite materials and built in local micro factories. Instead, the company deferred further investment in the bus program in August and reduced delivery expectations for a different vehicle from at least 400 to 20. Well, that's a pretty significant drop. Oh, yeah. Other companies have had to contend with higher costs. Prices for some battery materials have increased over the last few years. The global price of nickel, for example, reached its highest point since 2007, just last year. Bloomberg NEF's annual lithium-ion battery price survey showed a 7% increase in average pack prices in 2022, the first time ever. It's the beginning of an electric slide. As earnings season wraps up, many companies swear that they are the exception, that the imminent big funding round or impending project launch differentiates them from the rest, that their leadership's either disruptive and entrepreneurial style or deep industry expertise will push them ahead, that their in-house production or outsourcing will save them untold piles of cash or time, that the probes, lawsuits, turnover, and production delays across the industry are either so minor as to be irrelevant or so ancient that their mention is akin to exhuming the dead. But EV startups may be failing to acknowledge the simple truth. Robert Bollinger said, every single person massively underestimated the complexity and the time to get there. Yeah. The gasoline automotive industry has been built up over 100 years plus, right? To change it over, he said, it's going to take decades. We aren't anti-EV, but we couldn't agree yeah. more. After listening to all the nonsensical swagger and comments from people like Governor Newsom, Issuing an executive order requiring all new passenger vehicles sold in the state to be zero emission by 2035, people will just be crossing state lines to buy their ICE vehicles or yep. move out of California. Totally. That's actually what most people have already been <laughs> doing as the LA Times reported a mass exodus out of the state. Yep. It goes to show that it pays to stick with reality and ICE vehicles are here for a long time to come. 
Remember, if you want to make sure you don't miss our future shows, you need to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You can also connect with us on Facebook. If you want more in-depth information, please visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com. A lot of frequently asked questions can be answered on our website. When you get there, scroll down the main page to find tons of free downloads designed to help you get through the process of buying a car without getting ripped off. Lastly, if we've helped you save time and money finding a car, consider leaving a tip to help us help the next person. You'll see a super thanks button just below the video, and there are links for making a tip in the description box. Just click the read more button seen below. Thanks, everyone. All right, if you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Mary Jo said and Elizabeth just said, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with Amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal. The Homer Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.